Massey here from Massey Machado Strength and Conditioning back with another episode of Move Your Feet. And today we made the pilgrimage to the Mecca of all things strength, fitness, and rehabilitation. I'm at the beautiful Functional Training Institute at Perform Better in West Warwick, Rhode Island. And we're going to film our episode here today. First thing we want to do is we want to answer one of our viewers' emails. And it goes as such. Dear Coach Massey, I watched some videos that you filmed at Parisi Speed School. You've been mentioning how to utilize ground reaction forces, and I'm very intrigued to learn more about building progressions that translate to actual gameplay. Could you give me a quick breakdown of your thoughts on that and GRF as a whole? Sincerely, Thomas Wachter, San Diego, California. Thank you, Thomas. And the uh, episode you're referring to is an episode we did after we conducted Staff, the staff development at the Parisi Speed School in Fairlawn, New Jersey. We did two episodes there and we did go over violent feed concepts. So let's go to the board real quick and I'm going to draw nice and big here so Maddie doesn't have to walk around with the camera and talk about the, uh, the simplicity of ground reaction forces as opposed to the complications. So this is you. Believe it or not, that's you. You're a stick figure and this is the ground. When you put biomechanical energy or force down into the ground, what you get back is GRF, ground reaction forces. Now here's the really important thing. I can generate ground reaction forces by doing this. Problem is, I didn't go anywhere. So what do we do with this GRF based upon what we want to happen? That's really important. If I want to sprint that way, my GRF has to start taking me that way. So Thomas, very intelligent question because how do we translate that to sport and gameplay? How do we put that into action? Maybe you want to take that GR off to send us back up. Well that deals with takeoff and landings and we're going to get into that in another episode. But for now, we're going to basically review what we did in the past two episodes and then progress that a little bit to really pound this violent feet concept into our brains. Okay? And today I'm going to call on my good friend Nick Steben from Perform Better into frame. So Nick, thanks for coming out today. Um, Nick is uh, he's a web developer, right? Yeah. So all the magic that you see at Perform Better, behind the scenes, he puts it on. The videos, all that content, Nick's the man. So Nick has most graciously volunteered, or I should say I drug him out of his cubicle today, to come and help us. <laughs> with this video. So Nick, we're going to go really, really, really slow and easy here. Um, so if you remember from the last episode, all we did was start teaching that guy, um, we called him the Punisher. We had him moving backwards and then we had him trying to drive his feet down, generate GRF and, and move forward. So quick review here. So um, Nick's going to just assume a nice athletic posture and go back. Now get out! Good. So what we're trying to teach Nick is to stay within his power pillar not get too long and get stuck in the mud, not tee, but actually get those feet down. And we're gonna come out a little bit more. We're gonna give you a little more space to operate. So come on up. Let's put this center line right on your crotch, Nick. This way you have a point of reference. And ready, and back. Now get out. Good. So you can see Nick is starting to self-correct because he's also understanding the importance of his sprint angle and his elbow drive. Because if you guys think about it, Maddie, come on with me real quick. Nick is technically just doing this at first, right? He's coming back. We know inertia, right? A body at rest remains at rest. A body in motion remains in motion. He's going to require some sort of force to stop his biomechanical energy going backwards to either stop him or propel him in a different direction. That's where that ground reaction force gets translated. You're literally using the ground reaction force in that transition to catapult him forward. Now, Nick's going to come back in, and we're going to have him take this lovely PB medicine wall. You know me, I love to differentiate, I love to remove upper extremity from lower extremity, because now I'm going to see how not honest Nick is. So Nick's going to get under that ball and hug it. Can you see your feet, Nick? No. Good. That's exactly what we're shooting for. Come on up, buddy. Okay. Nick's going to hug that ball, and he's going to take any reciprocal or compensatory movements away from his upper kinetics, and he's going to show me what those lower kinetics look like. Go! Get out! Yeah. So there's a little lag there now. A little lag there. But imagine, 
again, if we can develop Nick's GRF capability to where he can do that with that ball in his hand, when he also uses the reciprocal or compensatory movements of his arm, his elbow drive, he's going to be more of a stud than he already is. Ready, Nick? Bang! Get out! Sweet! Look at the feet. This is completely unadulterated. Literally, Nick came from behind his desk to do this. No warm-up, no nothing. We're going straight out. Nick, we got to get the tsunami bar in your hands now. So we like to use a couple of different tools. And one of the tools we do like is the flexible barbell, which is made by Tsunami Bar. And uh, Perform Better does carry the Tsunami Bars. It's, it's a wonderful way to deal with biomechanical reactivity, neuromuscular reactivity. And now we're going to use it two ways. A, he'll put it on his back. A regular back load or trap load. He's going to drop it down his traps a little bit. He's going to pull his hands in so it beats him up a little bit more. And we're going to go back. Get out. Yeah. So at just five pounds per side, Nick, a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. Now drop it down into that zercher load. He's going to put it in the crook of his arm, and he's going to use this ultra light bar. Yeah. Center on it. Now you're going to notice as he's moving back, he's going to have to overcome the additional reactivity that that bar is going to give him, okay? Hopefully he'll bend that bad Larry when he gets out. Set back, get out! There you go, Nick. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Lastly, we're going to go back to nothing in our hands, Nick. This one's going to be super easy. And this is sort of where the money shot is. We're going to now take Nick through some simple drills. Nick, all I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you back, I'm going to tell you forward, I'm going to tell you back, I'm going to tell you forward. React to me until I send you out, okay? So I'll just keep doing this. Boom, boom. I'm not gonna use any, any audio, any verbal. We're gonna go all visual here, ready? Get out! That's how you start to set them at a deficit or a disadvantage to find out if they're really getting the concept. Now we're gonna do another cute little thing because I also did get an email separate and apart. How do I put this into gameplay or I should say field space. And Nick, this is the one we talked about. We're going to send Nick backwards, then I'm going to pull him forwards and I'm going to, I'm going to throw him. I'm going to throw him in a direction. So you're going to want to start here. Because what we're going to want is we're going to want Nick to get up to speed. If he can't change directions with speed, then we're not really doing his agility much or his proprioception much justice. So I'm going to send you back. I'm going to pull you forward. And as soon as I snap you that way, Maddie, make sure his feet are in front. Set back. Come forward. Get out. Good stuff, Nick. So that's what it looks like. That's how you start to open it up. This is important stuff because when you get into gameplay, gameplay situations where you have to be able to stop, turn, decelerate, accelerate on a dime, this is super important stuff. Now listen, when you send an email, quick reminder, friends, put what facility you're from. I'd love to give you a shout out just aside from your name. If you want to become part of our on-location tour, send Perform Better uh, an email, okay? Tell them you'd like us to come out, we'll talk, and maybe I'll come out to your facility. Imagine getting your facility's brand, your facility's name, and yourself on one of these great videos. So until next time, this is Coach Massey from Massey Machado Strength and Conditioning telling you that greatness is forged, not fabricated. That's your day.